everybody, my name's Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. And today we have an hour for chair yoga. And I have with me a yoga block, which if you don't have a yoga block, maybe if you have a, um, a firm book or a couple of books wrapped in a towel, that can be useful, or even just simply a firmly wrapped towel will be great. Then the other thing I have is a yoga strap. So this is pretty easy to um, supplement with something that you have in your household, maybe a belt or a tie or a, um, something that you tie something on the roof of your car with, one of those straps, anything you have handy really. So you can pause this and go and get everything and then I'll meet you in a moment. Make sure that you have a sturdy, stable chair and that you've got a little bit of space around you. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that strap, belt, whatever you happen to have, we're gonna place it around the ribs. So I've put a circle in mine, um, just because this is a yoga strap. But if you don't have a yoga strap, you can just tie whatever it is that you have. We're gonna put it around the bottom ribs. And we want it to stay up. So I'm gonna place mine around the bottom ribs here, but I can easily slide my hands and my thumbs into it. So make sure again that it can stay up and you can take a bit of time adjusting that, but make sure it's not too tight so you really do have some space there. Rooting down through your feet. So you can pick up those toes if you like, give them a little wiggle, and then you can pick up through the heels, anything you like there, and then settle the feet down to the floor, more or less under the knees so your feet aren't underneath you or out in front. That'll just give you a little bit of stability. And then rooting down through your feet and rooting down through your seat too, so deeply into that seat. You're welcome to sit away from the back of your chair unless you need the support of the back of your chair for the class. And you can slide forward and back depending on what we're doing and how you're feeling, of course. So we root through our feet in our seat and there's that deep connection downwards. You can even imagine if you like roots growing downwards. And then from there, rooting down to rise up through the spine, through the crown of the head, shoulders are soft and back and down and collarbones are wide. Big breath in, exhale it out. Nicely done. Still with that strap around your ribs. And then start to take your awareness down around the bottom ribs and into the strap. So the inhale as your breath expands, your ribs push against that strap somewhat. Exhaling, the ribs soften, and even letting go of so much air that it feels like your ribs are drawing in so that belt could actually um, fall down maybe even to your waist or get a little looser. So the inhale, we're filling up the strap evenly, front, sides, and back. And the exhale, long, slow breaths out. You might even notice your belly button drawing in and up as your diaphragm pushes air out of the lungs. And these are slightly deeper breaths than we normally take. So if you're getting lightheaded in anywhere that doesn't feel comfortable for you, no big deal, release that kind of breath. This is just a way of bringing our awareness to those lower ribs and getting those deep, slow breaths. And that's one of the simplest ways we can reduce the stress response. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. So it's your width of strap, your breath length. Just building up that awareness, noticing if you naturally breathe more into one side of the strap or the front or the back more and see if you can even that up as best as you can. We're not looking for perfect, we're just noticing. 
And you can even play with it a little if you like and breathe into the back of the ribs. And breathe into the front and breathe into the side of the ribs just to notice the difference and how you can change up your breathing. And then as best as you can, we breathe into the ribs as evenly as possible. Front, back and sides all at once on the inhale and the exhale, feeling that even softening as the breath releases. Another five breaths just like that. And this is the great thing about using props in yoga is you get really great feedback. It gives us a little bit more awareness to our bodies. More or less one more breath. Mm -hmm, nicely done. And then bring the breath back to its own natural breath and you can release that strap. Keeping the awareness, if you like, in the breath around the ribs. You're going to take that strap over our legs or whatever it is that you have as a strap. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Letting the breath settle back down to your own natural rhythm. Rooting in the feet and seat to rise. And then from there, we're going to take that block in between the knees. And of course, all of these um, are simply just options. If this is not something or you don't have anything handy, no big deal. But we're drawing the legs gently into the block as an evenness, both sides. So our feet are rooting down, our legs are drawing into the block just gently. So it's not a vice grip here, just gently. So we get that feedback as to whether where um, one leg is doing something or we're shifting around. We drop into the seat and rise from there. Allow the hands to dangle down. And with this connection, we're just gonna circle through the shoulders one direction. Inhaling up, exhaling down, whichever direction it is you're going in. And again, that block gives us feedback as to if anything's happening in the lower body. And we'll take that round in the opposite direction when you're ready, just to warm up the shoulders as we're going to be moving into the shoulders a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Last one here. Beautifully done. And now with that strap or whatever you have handy, we're going to take knuckles towards me as if you're kind of riding a bike and let the strap come between the hands. Now the wider that strap is, the easier it's going to be in the shoulders, so the closer those hands are going to be, then the harder it is in the shoulders. So rolling the shoulders down, collarbones wide once again. This is the exhale. On the inhale, we're just going to lift the arms up any height, exhaling it down. And on the first two, you're probably going to figure out what length of strap is going to suit you. Inhaling up, exhaling down, or those hands can come high or not, your choice. Um, bigger is not better here, so we're just working with what feels good for us. Now if you get to a certain stage and think, oh my shoulders are way up by my ears, just simply widen the hands. Notice how that feels. Inhaling and exhaling. As we do this, we're rooting to rise. So. The inhale, we're lifting up. We're not jutting our ribs forward, which is what we like to happen when we take our hands up because it makes it easier. Exhaling down. So keep those front ribs here knitted inwards. And notice as you take the arms up, if you get to a stage where you do let the ribs come forward and that's where the range of motion is in your shoulders and then you compensate by drawing into the spine. There's no right or wrong, it's just simply awareness of that's what starts to happen. 
Inhaling and exhaling. If you want to add on, you're drawing the hands away from each other, so you're building up a firmness between the, um, with the strap, and then you're starting to build a little bit of strength into the movement as well. And so the further, um, the more firmness you draw your hands away, then the more strength that is going to require. Inhaling and exhaling. It doesn't have to. You don't even have to have any firmness in that strap at all. You can keep it loose if that makes it feel more comfortable in your body. Got another two here. You can always rest. And again, the adjustments are always there, taking the hands wider. One more to go. And exhaling that down any movement you need to release any tension, go ahead. Now we can do exactly the same um, options, inhaling up, exhaling down, or we're gonna add on. And for this, I suggest maybe starting with slightly wider on the arms. Inhaling up, exhaling, we're gonna bend the elbows. Now, depending on your range of motion, that strap may come in front of your face, it may come on top of your head, or it may come behind the head. Once again, those front ribs are knitted in, so we're not jutting the ribs out, so we feel like we're getting the hands back a little further. One is not better than the other. It's simply where your range of motion is. Inhaling and exhaling. If this is not for your body, no big deal. Come back to lifting and lowering. And of course, the option to draw those hands away and then we're getting some resistance there with the strap, inhaling and exhaling. So you get to decide how much or how little you do here. As you're lifting and lowering here, you might notice the one arm is taking the lead or you're starting to slide to one side and then coming back to center. It's just simply building awareness to where it is that we have patterns in our body and then evening things up if that suits us or not, depending on what's going on in our body, some injuries, surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. So again, there's no right or wrong here. We've got another three. Always rooting to rise, those legs are drawn in towards the block, but again, not a death grip. The next time we come up, we're gonna take those hands all the way down in front of us, release that strap, any movement you need here in the shoulders, go ahead. So using that strap once more, we're gonna take the strap over the right shoulder. Now, if you wanna let go of that block for a little bit, then you can. I'm gonna keep it there just because it's there and it's easy. Um, so, the strap over the right shoulder, right arm comes out, thumb to the sky, bending that elbow, and we're gonna take that strap in the right hand. Elbow draws out any amount. We've already got into the shoulder, so take it easy. Left arm comes out, thumb to the floor. Bend the elbow behind you and take hold of the strap. Now it might be nice to slide to one side so that strap falls over to the left if that makes it easier for you to grip. Elbows away from each other. The further the hands are away from the strap, the easier it's gonna be in the shoulders. So you can slide those hands away if that feels easier for you, or obviously the closer you take the hands, towards each other and maybe you can even take those fingertips towards each other and grip um, behind you. Maybe, maybe not in this lifetime, no big deal. One is not better than the other, but we're taking the elbows away from each other. Rooting to rise and if you've got that block there, the legs firmly draw in and the front ribs draw in too. And here we are staying for those steady breaths. Maybe taking the breath around those ribs, the awareness of the breath. Notice where it's more challenging for you to breathe evenly into that ring around your lower ribs. 
Another two breaths here. And again, elbows drawn away from each other. Last breath here. And then we'll slide the hands away from each other and roll through the shoulders. From here, that strap comes over to the left shoulder. Make sure there's enough behind you so your right hand can grip it. And again, that right, um, that right tail can come out behind you. Left arm out, thumb to the sky, bending the elbow and taking hold of that strap, drawing the elbow out. Maybe where you wanna stay, great place to be. Otherwise, right arm comes out, thumb to the floor. We're gonna take that back behind us and holding on to the strap here. Further the hands are away from each other, the easier it becomes, the closer they are towards each other, the more challenging it is. And elbows draw away from each other here. Steady and smooth breath. Notice if you're uh, peeking those ribs out in front of you and draw them in to keep a neutral spine. And then breathing 360 degrees around the ribs while taking those elbows away from each other. If the breath starts getting choppy, do less with the hands and the arms. Inhaling and exhaling. Last one here. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, release the hands down away from that strap. We're gonna take that strap off towards the side. We're not gonna need that until we come down towards the earth. Routine to rise, and if you took that block away, you can take it back into your, um, between your legs here. Rooting to rise once more, taking a big breath in, exhaling it out, hands to the top of the legs, seated cat and cow. So it's something we always do when we're, um, whether we're doing um, a mat class or we're on our chair, um, flexion and extension of the spine is so important for all of our movements. So hands on the top of the legs. On the inhale, the ribs now come forward, elbows and hands come back towards the pelvis or back behind you. That's the inhale, option to lift the chin. On the exhale, fingers push away as you draw the belly in towards the spine and we round, inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. And we've got that extension of the spine on the inhale, maybe sending the tailbone out behind you as you lift the chin on the exhale as the chin comes in and we round into the back body. Working at your own pace in your own time. Mm -hmm. Inhaling and exhaling. Beautifully done. And you might notice as you draw the knees in towards each other, what's happening there in the lower body on the inhale as we drag the heels back, the um, block tends to shift forward as we extend through the spine on the exhale, there's a tucking of the tailbone, drawing the pelvis onto the back of the pelvis so that block draws back, inhaling and exhaling. Just giving us that feedback as to what's happening in the lower body. Nicely done, the last one here. Coming all the way back up to center. And from here, we're just gonna take the elbows in towards each other, holding onto opposite forearms or opposite elbows, depending on what feels good for you. Rooting to rise, I'm gonna to start to circle with the elbows. Inhaling up, exhaling.